Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the RFM audio production channel where we help you get your snare sounding pristine. On today's episode, as I'm sure you've already gathered, we are working on mixing the snare drum today. We're going to be going through your levels between your top and bottom snare, we're going to be going through your phase relationship, and we're going to be going through EQ, compression and saturation at the end. If you're enjoying this content, please like, share and subscribe, put comments down at the bottom, that way you guys don't miss a thing. If you're interested in joining the chat, please follow the link down below and follow me over on Twitch. I'd love to see you guys over there. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Today we're looking at mixing the snare drum, specifically. Uh, yeah, we're going to probably do a little bit around the drums, but we're going to go for the snare drum. Uh, specifically on its own, mostly. Obviously in relation to the whole mix, but... What are we going to cover? We're going to cover a few things. We're going to cover a wee bit of gating. We're going to go over uh, some phase relation. Um, EQ and compression. Maybe even a little bit of reverb at the end as well. But the goal of this today is to make sure that you guys get the best snappy snare sound that you can out of your mix. Obviously I know there's a big joke amongst the... the professional industry of uh, that everybody's snare sounds like crap well we're gonna make sure that yours sounds incredible sounds absolutely amazing so let's just get jump straight into it i'm just gonna turn this music off and then right into the door so first off probably a good idea is to Get our headphones on to make sure that we can actually hear what we're doing. And we are going to take... First start off with some gating of the snare. Now I've actually got uh, two different uh, snare mics. The snare top and snare bottom. You might just have the snare top on. Uh, but if you want that it added like high end and crispiness to it. Then definitely make sure you've got a snare bottom. If you've just got the, you've just got the mix as is. You can work on as it is. So let's start off by just making sure we get rid of all that bleed that's amongst the, the snare drum. Let's have a listen to this on its own, shall we? Obviously a lot of cymbals. You can hear about the toms as well. So the reason we have to we have to get these to try get rid of as much bleed as possible is just to make sure that when we are processing the snare and when we are actually uh, like compressing it and EQing it, it's not also bringing up those like hi hats and those toms as well. There's no easy way to get completely all bleed out, but if you can minimize it as much as possible, I have had some situations where I have like. EQ compressed the snare and all that fun stuff and it has seriously brought the snare the 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 symbols up especially like during the compression um uh, and it has actually worked in my favor uh but it's not really what i was going for initially that was a bit of a happy accident that one but uh all right let's start off with a gate so i did a little bit of like low end eq and afterburner is still coming up <clears throat> I'll need to fix that. I know how to get rid of that. Well, let's get ourselves up a gate. Let's go to dynamics. Uh, and I shall use the Fab Filter Pro G. Most. This is a really good gate. I really quite like this one, but honestly, like, even your stock gates would usually suffice. It can take a little bit of getting used to a gate. So, what a gate does is when a signal gets below a certain level. It will actually cut off. This is actually really useful as well for streamers. If you're finding yourself, you've got like a lot of background noise going on. Uh, I know in OBS it has a set gate. You can basically set the threshold so that whenever you're speaking, that is when vol when signal comes through. But if you're not speaking, then it just cuts off uh, and it sounds really quite clean. So let's have a go at this. Uh, the threshold is where. Uh, the gate opens. So let's start off with that. You can still hear the, the toms. Uh, 
Right. Okay. That's not so bad. Uh, you can hear it's still a little bit choppy. It's kind of losing some of those transients. So if we just bring the attack right down, that'll open as soon as it hears that transient. That's fine. I like to add the look ahead just because what it does is it just it takes it adds a little bit more CPU power, but it'll anticipate the peaks coming in, uh, as you can actually see by the uh, the help menu here. So it's a lot more responsive in that way. Right, that's cool. Right, the release will decide how long it takes for that gate to then close. So if we just bring the release up, because you can hear that a lot of the body of that snare is getting cut off. You can also do that with a hold as well. It does roughly the same thing as how long it'll stay open before it starts to close down. As you can hear, there's still a lot of that uh, symbol coming through, but that happens at the same time as the snare hit. There's not a lot we can do with that. You can also be listening out for that ring. You have to decide whether that ring is really worth keeping or not. <clears throat> I mean, you could go through all this and edit it, but that's a lot more time and effort, and you can really like just chop off a lot of what the information you need. So, Gaten's a great place to start on. <laughs> you hear the difference already. Again, it depends all on the recording. There's not always going to be a perfect gate. Um, I can do a decent job of this. I know some people have got some techniques which really sound so clean. I thought that actually had a frequency one, but no. Let's stick with that just now. We've also got to do the same with the snare bottom. I don't believe the snare bottom picks up quite as much. Does a wee bit. Let's just add that to the effects chain as well. Again, you'll probably have to swap around some of the... Change around some of the parameters just to make sure it doesn't... Because, I mean, like, it's not a one-size-fits-all, so... See, that is something you can actually, like, basically also change the tonality of it using a gate. So, it depends whether that is what you're going for, but I would usually, if I was trying to change the, the characteristics of, like, the attack and the sustain and release, I'd rather use a compressor to do that than the gate. So, with gate, I try to make sure it's as clean as possible. Now, I'm thinking of a shorter release for this because the, the snare top has already got all the body in it. This snare bottom is just to get the sound of the rattling of the snare itself. So... Yeah, let's make that a lot more... A lot sharper. Right. And let's hear what that sounds like together. as opposed to turning all those off. See, 
we still got a lot of that ring in the from the and the ring in the body from the snare, which is great. But we're not getting all of that others. I mean, yeah, there still is a symbol coming in, but that's just because it hits the same time as the snare. It's not going to be easy to get rid of that. You can hear those toms in that notion. So that actually doesn't sound too bad. That actually worked quite well. So again, like that's just to make sure that none of the none of the processing that we do in this snare actually does affect the the overall the overall bit. Right. So next thing I'd recommend you go on to, and this can be very important, is your phase relationship between uh, both snare top and bottom, if you've got the two snare top and bottom, and also the phase relationship between the overheads as well. So, naturally when you get multiple microphones in a room like that, you will start to get phase issues. Uh, it doesn't matter, like, the, the recording engineer can do the best they can to actually like, compensate for those phase relationships, uh, and there are definitely great and poor ways of recording that can either create a lot of like as minimal uh, phase cancellation as possible or you can actually have really bad ways of recording which just has phase issues everywhere and that's the last thing you want. However, you are never going to completely cancel out phase cancellation at all. You'll never completely get rid of that. So the best thing to do is to experiment as to whether you're uh, your snares and your overheads need phase inversion. Okay, so that's literally all it is, is changing, is taking the phase and then just flipping it by 180 degrees, just completely putting it on its head. So, then what you've got to do is you've got to use your ears. There's really not that many ways of monitoring it on your eyes, you've just got to use your ears and decide what sounds better, right? At the moment, we've got both snare top and bottom at unit again, uh, so they're coming in at the same bit. We will mix them in relation with each other soon, but right now, that's not really what we need to do. So, let's uh, let's go for this, shall we? Right, what we'll do is we will invert the snare bottom. I hear some people say that you should do it anyway. I think it should be down to your ears. I think it should be down to the way it sounds. Most of the time, I do. Nah, I think that's good with that in. sounds good when you're listening out for these phase relationships you're best looking at somewhere at the the mid to low mid range listen in for that uh kind of more bodied sound if there's cancellation taking place it'll sound maybe a bit thinner uh maybe less snappy at times as well uh, or less punchy um you're wanting to go for that fuller sound that full bodied sound uh so we could go Listen to it a wee bit again. So that's got more of a full body sound after that's inverted. This is why I love Reaper is because it actually has a phase inversion button like built right into the channel. Not every DAW does that. Uh, I know on Pro Tools it doesn't. If you just pull up maybe like a basic EQ, uh, a lot of them will have a phase invert button in there and you can just put that right at the top of your signal chain if you wish. Um, it's a great thing. And I would not hesitate in spending time in this because if you can get it 
sounding as best you can before you actually start mixing things, before you start throwing EQs and compressors on, you can get it sounding fantastic before it even goes in. So what I'll do is I shall now create a, let's create a snare bus. That way we've got both of them in. Snare bus. Compare the phase with the overheads because there is going to be a slight bit of cancellation and again, listen to the body for it. Um, that way that you can actually be sure what's going on, right? That way you can be sure what it is. So let's... That's definitely fuller, it's punchier. There we go. That's definitely got a fuller sound. Right. Next, you're going to have to do it in relation with the overheads. I would recommend, now this is a little trick I used to use a lot, and I actually completely forgot about it until I was reading uh, one of my mixing uh, books just recently. Um, a great thing to do is, if you take your overheads and then nudge them back by, say, three to four milliseconds, it will put it more in focus with the snare itself. So let's hear the snare at these guys. Uh, as I said, as I was actually trying to demonstrate earlier, uh, see if you move them back by like three milliseconds, three to four milliseconds, you can get more focus in on the snare as well. So let's have a listen to that. So it's somewhere between 3 and 4 milliseconds is pretty good. Sweet. Already that is actually sounding a lot better than it was before. Um, it was sounding quite flat and quite uninspiring and we've literally just... Just made sure that things have cleaned up. There's and the phase is in in correct time. It's it's fantastic what the phase can do. To be honest, um, again, make sure. So just a wee summary of that is just to make sure that the snare top and snare bottom. You might want to invert the snare bottom just to add a little bit more. Uh, just to add a little bit more of that body, and then compare the relation with the overheads. It doesn't always happen that the snare needs phase inverted. So again, just use your ears that'll be the best way to to go about it uh, you'll actually find some uh some amazing results coming from that right so let's actually compare this to the rest all right, so let's try, right i'm just gonna delete this just now should be good to go. Nah, it's pretty good. Uh, one thing I actually didn't go through, which I'll go through just now, is it's worth trying to balance the snare and top and snare bottom the way you like it. Uh, it depends a lot more of what you want. Do you want that uh, that high end like splashy sound coming from the from the actual snare on the bottom of the drum? Or do you want that uh, snap at the top? So let's have a listen to it. Well, I like the splashy sound of the, the snare underneath.
cool. I actually like the way that sounds. That's pretty good. If anyone's got any questions, don't be afraid to ask. If I'm going too quickly, I can also slow it down or go through a few things for you. Anyway, so that's actually pretty good as that is. I, like, even before all of that, the snare was just disappearing. It was just completely gone. Um, whereas that sounds already... We haven't done much processing, and that already sounds a good bit better. But let's get on with some EQing. So I would recommend most of your EQing, you <clears throat> doing the snare bus if you've actually got, like, two different snare tracks. Uh, may as well just affect it all together. Again, like, volume... volume on the like how much can also add as a form of eq as well so again just make sure you've got the the levels balanced between the snare top and snare bottom the way you like it the way you want it to sound but as close as you can anyway and then you shouldn't have too much problem because if you're going to keep throwing a high end in there and you've not got the, the snare bottom high up you've, you're missing out a lot you're leaving a lot on the table there so let's just continue on with that. Right. Right, let's get some EQ up. So I've already put some uh, like low uh, high pass filters on the the snare top and snare bottom, uh, just to add, just to take away some of that low end, just to keep the the, the bass and the the uh, kick uh, its own space, right? Now, what a good thing to do is if you're wanting to add a little bit of like weight and punch to it, then boost at 120, 100, somewhere between 120, 180 hertz. It's a good place to start off. Um, so let's try a little bit here. Well, There you can hear. Got a lot of thud there. Uh, just pull that out now, we bit. Don't want it. What you could do is you could uh, you could high pass filter it and then put a resonance at that peak. You might be taking out a lot of the low end at that point. I know you want to get rid of some of that to leave space, but you might thin out the, the snare a bit much. But again, it might just depend on the recording. Just have a go at it. There's not no harm in experimenting as long as you've got the the final product you want. There can be if you're having problems with boxiness. And your your snare is, is just sending a wee bit goo, goo, goo. then you could search somewhere between the 180 range and uh, the 300. That can actually see if we actually just narrow that a wee bit. <clears throat> you can actually take out some of the the boxiness of it. I don't actually think this was that boxy. But... Let's just listen to it.
Can you hear that kind of? It's not the. It's not the the quite the thud or the 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 nice bit here. It's sort of like boom, bug. Snare is I absolutely love the snare instrument. I think it's it should be more or less the focus of the the drums. Uh, it is the bit that everybody loves hearing. So a good thing to do if you're having problems with maybe that snap, uh, the the actual like the 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 main snap of the actual instrument, you can try boost somewhere between one and two k. Uh, that'll add. A good bit too. So let's have a let's have a fight. It's actually not bad. They're right there. So let's have a listen to that. If you feel like it needs some of the, the things around it, then no harm in doing a little bit of a wider EQ. I like to try keep it a wee bit narrow just to emphasize that more a little bit. And when we all start off as mixing engineers, we always seem to we always seem to be told, don't boost this much, don't cut that much, don't do this, don't do that. It's not a harm, it's not harmful to, to follow those rules when you're starting out. Because if you're starting out, you're probably, your ears are probably all new to all of this information that's going on, you haven't had enough training in it, you're probably still trying to get used to it. So if you end up pushing things too hard, you will end up making them too harsh or uh, too dull, um, too problematic. Uh, but that is just the that is just the the case of things. So, in this situation, I recommend. Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Give me two seconds. In this situation, it's worth if you're again if you're just new starting off, then it is worth uh, just sticking to these rules uh, to start off with. If you've had experience in mixing and you have trained your ears to know what sounds good and what doesn't, then you are worth actually just abandoning those rules because you're then leaving so much on the table with that you're leaving so much creativity you're leaving so much more interest and intrigue to it don't be afraid if something needs more presence don't be afraid to go over that 3db mark that everybody keeps going on about push it to five push it to six push it to 12 flaming heck i've added uh like i've added I think plus 15 db on uh plus 15 db above 15k just to add more top end to a set of uh, uh horribly dull uh, uh symbols and it's worked and it does the job so don't be afraid to add those things look at that i've already added like 6 db here i don't think i'll need to go much further than that but my recommendation is don't care too much about what that number says right what you do is you push it till it's too far and then just bring it off ever so slightly right, 
that's a bit much. Let's hear it in context of the mix. TV. It's not made a huge difference, but you know what? It already sounds a bit. You can also add a little bit of top end, like for some presence, maybe some snap, 3k and above, really. I'm gonna need to. Don't need that much. Here before and after the EQ. It doesn't sound bad without the EQ, but it's got a lot more excitement too. Sora starts to disappear, we take that box and it's out as well. The one thing I do love about the Pro Q series is that it has uh, an auto gain, an auto out, or an auto gain uh, option. Every time you make things, make sure you're, every time you're changing things like EQing or compressing, make sure that you actually match the level with these things because if you don't match the level, you'll think it sounds better. But the truth is, when things sound louder to our ears, they sound more exciting. But if you actually bring them back to a similar gain related to what it sounded beforehand, then you might find it actually sounds worse or it sounds weaker. Uh, it doesn't sound quite as punchy as you wanted it to. So always make sure you have your constantly EQ matching. Make sure it's it's the same level before as it was after. Uh, if you don't have that auto EQ but auto gain button. Which is great. Because you can actually see where it's cutting and boosting, but. So that way, when I turn this off, it should be the same level. But the, the resonance is not. The, the different frequencies are gone. Ah, we've done quite well and we haven't even got to any compression yet. Compression's great. Right, compression is not just bringing all of the lower stuff up, which is exactly what it does. And you have to, you have to be wary when it does that. But compression can also change. As we mentioned earlier, like you could do it with gates, but I recommend doing it with compression. You can change the tone and the personality of a snare drum, how it works. Um, so let's bring up a compressor, shall we? Uh, do I go for the Pro C or do I go for the? Let's go for the CLA. I like the I like the CLA as a solid compressor. Um, I kind of like the grittiness of the bluey bluey version. I've mentioned it in some previous streams. Right. A good place to start usually is uh, not the fastest attack, but back off slightly, because if you that way it'll catch the body of the snare drum, but it won't catch the initial transient of it, uh, which can be important for punch. I have got another technique which uh, I'll be willing to show you, but let's get that in it. But and I'll probably do somewhere like a 
a medium to fast release. So let's start here. Let's just try to get 3 dBO, 5 dBO reduction, yeah. Let's hear it on its own. Man, it's still a bit quieter. So that's bringing up a little bit more of the body, so that's giving that more thud, 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 just after the snap. I like a bit of a faster release, actually. thing about compression is it can push your drums forward in the mix um especially the likes of the snare it can really do it a lot of wonderful. Yeah, I want you a bit more balanced but yeah definitely some more punch now I've always thought the problem with having like a really fast attack on the on the snare especially if you're wanting like more of that snap uh it if you put a really fast attack it will just clamp down onto that snap but i watched a video recently which i thought was quite interesting and i'm gonna have a go at it myself is that you can actually have a fatter sounding snare from a fast attack the reason that is is because then the the snap itself is almost is pretty much at the same level as the body uh instead of just bringing the body up slightly it is all uh, squashed together so if you if that is what you're going for if you're going for less of a snap and more of a, a thuddy sound i don't know what kind of i don't think it would really work in in likes of punk uh i think you would want it probably i don't know maybe rock or maybe r&b or something like that um but let's have a go at it so we're pressing down on that transient a lot more but let's bring that up definitely brings up a lot more of the body more of a, a bouncy rounder sound rather than that nice snap. I thought that was AB. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Don't be afraid to uh, 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 don't be afraid to play with the ratio in this. Um, you can make it more aggressive. I'm going for a little. I don't think it needs that much compression. I think the the player has actually done a solid job of keeping the dynamics. You can see it goes up and down, but it's not that bad. I'm either
Working with acoustic drums is a very different thing from working with samples. Really because, like, you can definitely add samples towards it and then bring the levels down where you feel appropriate. But when you bring level down on, levels down on samples, it does exactly the it does exactly the, the same thing. It has exactly the same hit, the exactly same tone just lower down but when a drummer hits something softly it has a different sound to it as to when they hit it hit it snappily i mean hit it hardly because i mean you'll get or maybe like a pa pa and a softer softer hits but you'll not get that with the uh, this with samples you will just get that like lower down uh, so it does actually make a huge difference just keeping things now you can add samples to really if you feel like the snare was not well recorded uh it is really quite poor uh, and you feel like there's nothing you can really do to the mix and there's no harm in adding samples you don't have to put the sample right at this right at the front and center you can add it in you can add a sample that uh might add some extra high end to the to the snare if it's seriously lacking it um, you could just put it in slightly just to add a little bit more attack. It doesn't have to be the front and center. It doesn't have to be the sound of the drums. Um, and that's what's great about it. But I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with how this, this snare was recorded. I think it works well in context with the mix. Remember, compression doesn't just have to be about bringing the lower levels up. It's the same when you actually like compress a distorted guitar, a distort distorted guitar. When something's distorted like that, it'll naturally compress it anyway. That's how distortion works. It has been pushed too through to point where it's almost compressing, and then it starts to distort. So when you're compre using compression of distorted guitar, you shouldn't do it because you feel like you need to work with the the dynamics of it. You should only do it if you feel like you want to change how the guitar works. Same with the drums as well. If you want to change that attack, that initial attack, if you want to make it punchier or want to dull it down, maybe add some more body to it. And each compressor, even VST compressors, even plugins, have add a sense of colour and tonality to it. That is why I love the CLA 76 is because it has a little bit more of a grittiness and a, a, an added colour to it. So definitely worth checking that out. Um, definitely worth experimenting with different compressors that you have and see what you enjoy working with. By the way, guys, if you're actually enjoying, if you're really enjoying this content, uh, I do mixing tutorials every Monday. I'm considering doing like just a free mixing and chatting thing every Friday. And I also play horror games on a Sunday. So feel free to hit the follow, uh, that way it helps us out, and that way you guys can actually not miss a thing. Uh, I also throw this stuff up onto YouTube as well, that way everybody can, anybody that, that misses a thing, uh, just hit uh, exclamation mark socials in the chat, and then you can actually check uh, check out my YouTube channel as well. Um, probably going to start actually making proper YouTube videos soon instead of just throwing up my, my, recent, uh, my recent streams. But the point in this stream is so that you guys can chat to me and ask questions uh, about what I am doing. Uh, it's easy for me to give you all of this uh, this information, to give you all of this uh, stuff going on. But if your mix is suffering and I give you this information, this might, honestly, it might not help. So 
if you have questions about anything or like want a bit of advice don't be afraid to chat don't be afraid to put it into the into the chat box guys anyway let's get back on to this another thing you can do if you're having a lot of problems with uh, the high end in your snare if you're not getting that kind of like splashy snare sound i have to admit i'm again as i've said i'm already quite impressed with how this sounds one of the greatest things i used to when I first started mixing, I didn't realize how, um, I didn't realize how important saturation and distortion is. I used to be quite avidly like using as minimal, minimal distortion as possible, but you can add so much good, uh, you can add so many good things with distortion and saturation. You can add so many harmonics and Oh man, adding it to a snare is absolutely incredible. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to pull up some bad filter Saturn. Top of it. Doesn't even have to be a lot. Again, make sure you don't push it too much because you can start taking pulling the life out of it saturation distortion has a natural tendency to actually suck the low and low mids out so again do this like be careful with how much you're pushing it So you can hear already pushing it, I've actually started taking some of the attack off. With the Saturn you can add a little bit of tone to it. Don't need that much. I'm just gonna keep that at quite low because that did actually start to take away a lot of the attack and the snap sound. Um, but it's a great way of adding more high end to that stuff and it can be absolutely incredible. Um, see, as soon as I found that out, just adding distortion to likes of drums, it changed my mixes so much. sounding pretty good so one last thing i can recommend i mean this is something you would probably do later on in the mix but i'm going to add some reverb to this and reverb can be a big component to a snare um if you're looking for stuff that's caught kind of more uh, reminiscent of like the 80s and stuff like that you probably have big long washy washy uh reverbs but in this one we're going to keep it relatively short uh relatively dry but it's still 
a reverb adds so much space, especially like I like to add dabs of it here and there in the the overheads because the overheads do add their own reverb. Uh, they add their own room sound to it. But with this, a snare can be, especially if it's so front and center, it is worth adding at least a little tiny bit of reverb on there. Um, so let's get that up. I actually currently don't have any good reverbs per se. Um, when I say good reverbs, I mean like I really want the Valhalla reverb, but I haven't bought that yet. Um, I have used it in the past and it is absolutely incredible. Um, Valhalla do some fantastic uh, like reverbs, so let's just go for a short reverb. What I might use is I might just use one of my delay plugins because I have had very mixed results with the stock reverb plugin for Reaper. Like sometimes it sounds good, but for some reason, and uh, when you put it on a, see, I know it says the Fab Filter R. I actually don't have that. That's a demo. I actually really need to ins uninstall that because that's a problem. As you see, I don't have a license for it, and those things are very expensive. And honestly, having tried it, I do not believe it is worth it. Uh, so let's remove this. See the reverberate. I believe that's the. Right, that's the one we're looking for. Uh, and then we'll just add that to wet. So room size, probably quite small. Uh, let's just add some rooting into there. Right. Let's just listen to it on its own. See, it has that kind of squeakiness sounds, and I don't actually know where that comes from, but what I'll do is... Why is that squeaky squeakiness that actually comes from that? That's just disturbing. Anyway, uh, I'll probably what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a delay instead, but just mainly use the reverb. And I shall use my favorite delay, the uh, money M delay. I will do this really short delay. Been out. Just maybe... Let's just go for it. Hello, Ghost Melon, how you doing? Currently just looking at the snare today, getting some stuff going on here. We've actually just done a lot of cleaning up and making it sound snappier and sound really good, so we're just having a quick look at some reverb. Yeah, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. It's a lovely day outside, which always makes me cheery. Have you been up to much today? Are you working as normal? Right, and then what we'll do is we'll pull back that routing, so it doesn't need so much. Yeah, 
Yeah, working a wee bit intense, so I may lurk for most of the stream, but I'm taking a coffee break right now. Yeah, no problem. Just hit exclamation mark lurk. Go for it, man. You're always welcome here. It's nice that you're just willing to listen. snare just to add a little bit more space to it uh we've made it sound really punchy and we're just kind of dialing all this in now so uh, i can go through the track and you can actually hear what it sounds like that's too much what i would recommend I, I always say this whenever you're working with reverbs and delays is shave off some of the highs and shave off some of the lows because a lot of reverbs have this unnatural high end to them um, and it does stick out like a sore thumb. It can sound absolutely horrible. Uh, thankfully, the, the Manny Maraquin delay actually comes with a, a high pass and a low pass filter. So I always like to just kind of start cutting off roughly about there. So that's just a short reverb we've got on here. That snare sounds... I'm actually really happy with that snare. Um, and we actually didn't do an awful lot. You can always put on more EQ. You can always put on more compression if you feel like it. If you feel that's what's necessary. Um... I was quite happy with how a lot of this is actually ended up and it sounds pretty solid. So let's have a listen to it right through so we actually get it. Yeah, the vocals got a wee bit more of a medium reverb. Uh, reverb Push that snare to a wee bit more. The trick I showed in one of my previous streams was you can actually compress the reverb as well. It adds a lot more attention to it. Do like a real Pretty sure that's the same delay time as the other one. If it is, then that'll fit quite nicely. Right, no, it's not. 